Now, when I hear the answer to these questions, the standard answer I hear is that people are going to cut back on administration and protect teachers, class sizes, other classroom-related expenditures. But I've read a lot in education, uh, and it leads me to believe that trimming administrative fat won't result in multi, multi-million dollar savings. It simply doesn't happen based on what I know. So uh, the question is, that's a bit of a preamble, just address ways that you think you can find savings. Uh, one more time, please. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, address ways you think you... I'm sorry, I'm losing it here. Okay. Address ways you think you would find savings to help make the best use of TUSD funds. And if you think cutting administrative costs will produce substantial savings, it would be helpful if you could give some examples of where the administrative waste can be found. That's a pretty tall order in a minute. I know that. Minute the, 10. <laughs> minute 10. <laughs> the, probably the most important function of the board is the budget because it's through the budget that policy is implemented and I think the board generally has been pretty weak on this. Uh, as far as a priority, I think that I would want to direct a great deal more funding at uh, struggling students in the very early experiences they're having in education, that is K1 and 2. I think it's a tragedy that these children are kind of knotted through the system and by the time they hit high school, which I find at Tucson High, a shocking number come to ninth grade not able to begin to do high school level work. That's got to stop. Those kids are always going to uh, be failures and it's not their fault. The $17 million is a myth, the figure is a myth. Um, staff submitted in the last few days that they miscalculated that from the beginning. Uh, if 204 passes, then uh, we will not have that kind of a deficit. If it doesn't pass, we have no idea. So we shouldn't even mention that number anymore. Um, I do believe that there is a lot of room to cut in administration. Um, that's one reason I voted against this year's budget. I have pushed for procurement reforms and rebids and bids of co contracts over the last several years that have saved millions of dollars. And that's just one example of where there is fat in the budget. So I really believe that's there. I am advocating that the board set percentage floors on the amount of money to be spent in the classroom for the next two or three fiscal years. The TUSD is one of the lowest in the state on money spent in the classrooms, much lower than even we were five years ago, and I think the board needs to set a floor and force the administrative cuts to happen. I think the idea of, uh, of cutting at the, at the administrative level is important to consider, but we, we have to also look at it in a, in a more broad-based fashion. I think it's going to take a lot of different things in order to balance the budget. Uh, the $17 million issue, again, not an issue, but as a Pima County employee, I am required to forecast, uh, along with my, the rest of my team in my department, a year, possibly even a year and a half to two years, as to how we're going to expend our, 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 the, the, the funds we have available to us. The taxpayer dollars, the $17 million, whether or not that's, that's real or not, it's still taxpayer dollars. One dollar, $17 million. So we have to be responsible about how we forecast this. And that starts again with Dr. Pettigone and his team. If they are not entirely sure how much money they're, we're, we're, that's at stake, that's an issue. And I think we have to make sure, again, that that budget is, is uh, transparent and accessible to people. I think revenue generating is important. I think looking at expanding summer school, expanding, uh, again, the use of our facilities, and uh, possibly cutting some of that back. So again, uh, whatever the number is, I think it's time to take a hard look at the district and the way it's organized. And I think that the way we can do that, we can, we can do, we can raise money by renting out our facilities. We can attack some of the problems where they are. If the problem is that our schools are not energy efficient, we can make an agreement with JTED. I have, gone, I have already gone and looked into these things to find out if these are viable solutions. 
And in fact, I have not had anybody tell me that they were not. We could make a, we could put together a program with JTED to make our buildings sustainable. Once we have sustainable buildings, perhaps with solar energy on the roof that are actually feeding energy back into the, the solar grid, the electricity grid, we could actually be making money with our school buildings. Our schools could be serving the community by opening our libraries in the same way that we open our parks by renting out our facilities, putting in school-based medical clinics. There are actually federal grants for these things. Are we looking for those things? I want us to. Well, here's the thing, folks. If you have a budget deficit at home, you're not gonna put a solar panel on your roof. You're gonna make a real decision, and that is you're gonna cut back the cable bills and anything else, and you're gonna trim. Now, as a district, the reality is a $17 million deficit is very real. This is the stimulus dollars really pushed off this cliff, and that's where we're at right now. The stimulus dollars have dried up, and that's what's happening, including declining enrollment, which most major districts in Arizona are seeing. Now, we can cut 1010 if you want. That's $8 million. You're still not going to solve the $17 million deficit, and you don't have any administration or any functions. I believe we need to look at non-classroom dollars. We need to look at the possibility of outsourcing operation functions like transportation, like food services. Other of these candidates are not prepared to make real decisions because they're in cahoots with the unions that have crippled this district. We need to make real decisions and we need board members that are going to make those decisions. Do I get a rebuttal? Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, did, did you address Quite specifically, a I, that okay. I, I I'm sorry, I did space out. You, yes, you do get 30 <laughs> seconds right now. I was looking at another question here, and I apologize. Please take, yes, Mark? So, on the rules, the objective. He objected to her policy proposal. He wasn't addressing the board member personally, so what is the rule? I'm going to give her 30 seconds. Okay. No, I, I think that's great. I just wanted to know if the rest of the Thanks for the clarification, Mark. Thanks for the clarification, David. Um, it's not clear to me, actually, that when you're in a short-term budget problem that you don't take long-term solutions and make them happen. That's the situation that we're in. Actually, the $17 million, if, budget, if uh, Prop 204 passes as it should, we actually have extra money. And so you're right, we shouldn't be talking about that, that amount of money. We should be talking about how we vision the future for our district. And that's where the solar idea came up, and I completely stand by it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Crystal. Um, I don't know about you, but there's two. there are two board members up here. One who just said that the $17 million deficit is very real, and another one just said it's a myth. And so first, I think we need definite transparency, and we need a board who understands how much money we really have. That is critical, critical to these decisions. And I think so it comes down to transparency, and it comes down to accountability. And if we just cut at the top, that's a big, a big, big hole. If we just fire 300, that's a big, big hole. If we just close 30 schools, that's a big, big hole. We can't do any of those. It definitely needs to be a variety, a variety, a formula of, of, of many, many different things. But it needs to come down to accountability, and that goes back to achievement. How is each and how are each and every of these programs, the, the uh, positions, and how are they affecting achievement? So if we can align that to achievement, and of course we, we cut as far away from the classroom and that achievement as we possibly can. But seriously, I'm just still dumbfounded that one person says, yay, 17 million's a myth, and one person says, no, it's very, very real. That is very concerning to me. Can we get a response? Yeah, those guys get a rebuttal now. Yeah, you both on. Actually, you both do. Um, let's begin with... 15 seconds. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Miguel, since you haven't had a response yet, let's begin with you. Well, well, here's the thing, it's the 17 million, that is correct, and I hope that Prop 204 passes. The reality is this district does not have an override like most uh, ur uh, suburban districts like Sunnyside or Catalina Foothills have. The 17 million dollar deficit is our declining enrollment, the stimulus amounts are drying up, that is the reality here. We push this cliff forward when the federal government to decide that. And I'm not saying I'm against that, but that is the reality. And now this governing board 
needs to make the decisions, and I believe that a majority of the board members would agree that this deficit's real if 204 does not pass. Okay, Mark? I really think we should be talking about policy in schools, not the board, but since we did, uh, the $17 million was put forward as the expected deficit of school forecast. It's very clear staff has said that is an error. In fact, that's just correct. Uh, we will have extra money if it passes. That was a miscalculation, that's unambiguous. If it doesn't pass, then we may have a deficit much larger than $17 million. Uh, probably, but that's very hard to predict because it depends on what the legislature does. Uh, the final person on this is Don. It seems like uh, staff is juggling the numbers again. You know, it seems like a circus. I'm telling you, they paid eight hundred thousand dollars to an employee uh, because they want to face a lawsuit. A million dollars had to go back to the state because they couldn't keep proper bookkeeping. I mean, what's going on with the administration? And then the $17 million deficit, that's still taxpayers' money, no matter how you look at it. That's your money that is being lost. And it's going to affect the education of our children. And if we don't get this budget crisis fixed, it's going to be a problem in the long run. And we need to start finding solutions, and we need to find those solutions by cutting administration staff, reducing and consolidating because when you lose a thousand students a year we can't have the same number of staff people in the administration they have to be reduced also when they talk about closing nine schools and they're talking about closing another 20 schools where is the reduction coming from we have to look at staff and we have to look at the administration 